Hi, and welcome everyone to this uh, focus on the Sunday night push, as I'm calling it. So tonight is the night before classes officially start at LTCC. And I wanted to offer this video as well as an email with a more traditional text version of this as an opportunity to make sure that everything is live for classes uh, for tomorrow. And just to uh, remind ourselves, all classes should be live by Monday, April 8th at 8 o'clock a.m. And one of the things I think that's important as we go through some of these tips to do some minor fine-tuning of your class to get it live is that first impressions really do matter in an online class. If you think of a traditional face-to-face -face class, if you've taught one of those in the past, the first day that you walk into the class, how organized you are, your syllabi, the information you provide to students, how you answer questions, your demeanor, sense of humor, whatever, all those are good opportunities to make a first impression with students in the face-to-face -face class. I think we really need to think of the same in terms of a DE class and how to make it positive for students here at LTCC. And in that regard, I would offer you the opportunity to think about making a welcome video for your students that takes them through their class. And it's a great opportunity to really give your students a sense of the foundation of the class, of some of your expectations, of the grading, and so forth. And just to show you how that might work, I'm looking at my class. I'm, in addition to being the temporary DE coordinator for spring, I'm teaching a number of classes, including ISP and DE. And so it's something that I like to do, and I call this the class intro video. And the students click on this, and what it is, essentially, is an introduction to the class. I take the students through the framework, I talk about everything that they see in Canvas, including all the links or tabs on the side. I talk about the assignments in detail. I talk about my approach to discussions. I talk about grading. I take them through the syllabus. And it's a pretty long video. Uh, I may actually include this then as a resource in the future. We'll see how that goes. But um, you know, you could certainly create one of these and tailor it to your needs and what you want to do. But what this video does is it takes students through the entirety of the class, the foundations and what I call the architecture of the class, what they need to know, my policies, how to move through the various modules in the class and so forth. And I personally think it's an important opportunity to make that connection, that initial connection with the student. And so it's just something to think about possibly doing a welcome video. I'll let you know that later in the quarter I'll be offering some tips on creating media for your class. I'll talk about voiceovers, I'll talk about audio quality, I'll talk about doing some other things in your class that makes it a little more interactive. I think one of the things we want to think about is that our class, our DE class, should be as interactive and exciting and innovative as our traditional face-to-face -face classes are or our ISP classes are. So it's something to ruminate on, I think, a little bit later in the quarter, but a good opportunity as you work on your Sunday night push here to get things going for Monday, just think about how you're going to welcome your students to the class so that it is a nice environment as they make that first impression with you as an instructor. So let's talk about some practical things now. This first thing is addressing how to do the start and end dates. And the key on this is going to be doing this in two places on your Canvas shell. So let me jump to my shell to give you a sense of how this works. All right, so let's take a look then at how we set the dates for the class in two places. So in your shell, just go to the bottom under settings. And the official start of the class should be April 8th at 8 a.m. And then the end date is to allow for work to come in, say, January 27th at 11.59 p.m. So it's set at 1 a.m. on June 28th. So the recommendation is to check this. Students can only participate in the course between these dates. And to also leave this checked as well, which allows students to not look at your, at your class, say, from previous terms, just to keep protect the integrity of your class. And then this would allow students to view the class before the start date. So I always leave that unchecked. Those are the settings I choose. And also copy this for the next screen just so I have that. And everything else on here is basically 
set up as it is. You know, this is all set up in IT, the spring quarter and so forth. It's always nice to add an image to your class and that way on the navigation on dashboard you have an image set up for your students. Be sure when you're done with the setting of the dates, the start and the end, to hit update course details at the right lower section of that setting page and it should be then set up. Let's do this in one more place. So go to sections right next to course detail and click on the section. And I'm going to then click on edit section. And so it's already set up here again. If you just cut and paste from the previous screen, you could do that and it'll be set. And then we're also recommending to click on that as well and hit update section and everything should be set for your class as far as the dates go. So the next thing to focus on is to make sure that you disable any unneeded tabs in terms of your navigation within Canvas. So let's take a look at that now. Keep in mind when you're in the instructor view you will often see grayed out tabs here. If I launch the student view those actually go away. So this allows you, and you know, the student view is always nice because it allows you to see exactly what the students see. I'll leave student view and go back to my instructor view. So when looking at my class, I have one tab that I think I would like to disable, and that's attendance. Attendance might be useful if you're using actually this Canvas shell for your in-person class to do your role and so forth. In my case, and most of your cases, if you're doing DE, uh, it's not the case. A hybrid class, of course, might have it. So let's work on then disabling this unneeded tab here in Canvas. Once again, I'll click on Settings. So we went through Course Details and Sections. So now I'll click on Navigation. And basically, this is a drag and drop setting, which is very easy to use. So in other words, anything up here is going to have my course navigation. Anything down here are inactive and will not be displayed. So I just simply take my attendance and I move it there. At the end of this, I want to make sure I hit save. And then that will be sure to save everything. And then when I go back to home, as you can tell here, the attendance is now missing from the tabs on the left side of the screen. I wanted to mention one other thing with this. If you go to settings, do not forget that you can use navigation here as an opportunity to move things around. So in my case, it might be useful to I'm just thinking the way I like my class setup is to move my modules up here and then that way the students will see that initially because for me starting with the modules is a great place to navigate the class and again I want to hit save on the bottom and then it will save it and as you can see now when we go back home it will have modules in the updated place so that looks pretty good and I can I can leave it there and next, there's an opportunity for you to verify the links in your class to make sure they're all current. And recently, I showed you an error that I had made in setting up one of my classes. So there's actually a second video on this as well that you can check out. But let's jump to my class again to see how this works. These will include external links, which could be an external URL or a video, as well as internal. And judging from past experience, the one area where I encounter this a lot is with YouTube. If I have a YouTube video set up, I often discover that it, you know, the link goes dead. If it has something that maybe is copyrighted content or there's copyright claim, then it also could be the case. So in, in most cases here, I just set up these videos for my students to look at. And of course, something as simple as clicking on it will allow me to see um, whether or not that link is active. But there's actually a quicker way to do this. And for that, go to Settings, and then click on Validate Links in Content. Do that, and then you would hit Start. And actually, I just did a video on this, and you'll recall I found some broken links on my own page. And um, you can check out that video. I'll link to it as well, just in case you forgot that. But uh, that is how you do validation of course links that is found under Settings. And you'll see it right here in the right-hand side. 
Another good tip is to check our grade books just to make sure that all of the assignments are in there, that we've created the assignments correctly, and also that we've set some of the preferences that could make our lives a little bit easier down the road, particularly as we get close to final exams and final grades to make sure that everything is set up uh, for the student grading. So let's look at Canvas again. Okay, now let's take a quick look at two aspects of the gradebook itself. So for the first of these, you can click on Settings, and go to course details and scroll down here it's not that easy to see to see it's called course or grading scheme and this is where you can detail your grading scheme so check that set on set this here and then this will tell you then the percentages and whether that's an a b c d or f you can add your own custom scheme so you could do different ones if if you wanted to do that here's the general one that Treva has set up and I could just select that and hit done. I'll say in my own case, I base it all on points and not percentages. And so because we don't have integration of the Canvas gradebook and the LTCC gradebook, what I do is generally I don't necessarily worry about the grading scheme. In the future, if we had that kind of integration, I could see that as being useful. Let's look at one other area, and that'll be under grades. And for privacy, I'm just putting up this here to block out the student names. You want to click on the Settings tab and then click on Treat Ungraded as Zero. And so that actually is quite useful because in my case, if a student doesn't turn in a discussion post for a particular week, then Canvas will automatically assign that student's grade as a zero. So it makes it a little easier as opposed to having to manually go through your grade book, say at the end of the quarter or around midterm time, to make sure that the Canvas grading scheme is getting things correct. And the next tip is to assess the course architecture in the class. And by this, I mean, do you have a system that by which everything is set up for the students, all your foundations are there such that you're not having to come back during the quarter and add new things. And I'll talk about in just a bit that actually a, a DE class is really never finished in a sense. You shouldn't just um, set your class up and let it go on its own. Obviously, all of us have to be involved in the class, I would say on a daily basis in terms of instructor presence. But let me jump to Canvas to show you some of that. And so in terms of this area of assessing course architecture, what I mean by this is that you just want to make sure that everything is in place for your students such that they have a seamless transition into your class. They know how to get started if you're doing a welcome video, if you're trying to point students to the syllabus first, depending on what you set as your home page. And I think probably most of you have done that, but you can click on the set home page right on the right hand column of your instructor view. You can choose an activity stream, you could choose a module, you could do the assignments or the syllabus. I always set it in my case as the syllabus. Totally up to you is your with your preference uh, as far as how you teach. But I think in terms of architecture, it's just important that you have your layout correct, the way you like it in terms of how your tabs are going to appear. Is your syllabus comprehensive? I've mentioned this in some other videos about plagiarism. Do you have information about due dates? If your discussions are due a particular day and time, make that very clear early on because answering all those questions later, if you don't have that information, it's time consuming and it's also, frankly, confusing for the students. Any other policies? Do you have your DRC accommodation statement up here? Do you have the plagiarism statement? Do you have your conduct code? Your grading scheme? all the information in my case it's all the content the readings the videos for the particular week so if you have your syllabus set up comprehensive syllabus that's a good start and then if you plan to use announcements a lot think about how you want to have those set up if you're using modules as i do go through and make sure all your modules are set in such a way that there's a consistent way that the students can flow through the class in my case, it's very sequential. I move through each week. I know a lot of you don't do it that way, so it's going to vary from instructor to instructor, so there's nothing global really to state about it. But just make sure that things are clear for the student such that in terms of that first impression that they get in your class, they have a positive impression on the first day. Their questions, not that they won't have questions, but simple questions like, what's my grade going to be based on in this class, or when are discussions due, or how many exams are there? If they can't determine that from looking through your syllabus or 
the syllabus and a combination of the modules depending on how you do things then you might just want to go back and readjust that to make it as comprehensible to the student as possible and of course it's important to actually publish your course okay and the last thing to look at here which is kind of obvious is just make sure that your course status is set to publish which is greened out so if you see this unpublished just switch it to published keep in mind if you're teaching a face-to-face -face class and you're not necessarily requiring the use of the shell early on with your students then there's some variation in everything that I have presented in this video and if you have any questions about that if you're using a shell for a face-to-face -face or a hybrid class uh, feel free to connect with me and we can talk a little bit more about the specifics of that class since it's not following the traditional DE format as these classes that we've been talking about are. And just to let you know, um, I will be checking all the DE classes on Monday, probably in the morning or early afternoon, just to make sure that they all say published on them. And if yours isn't published, I'll probably give you a very subtle nudge to say, can you please get that class published? And again, the reason for that is the first impression of the student, the fact that they want to get started on their work, they want to see what text they have to buy, they want to see what their... Um, expected to do in terms of their assignments and so forth. So I will reach out to you if you don't have the class published on Monday morning. And I wanted to mention the fact, I'll do a video on this probably later in our term, but the philosophy that a distance education class is never finished. It's actually reminiscent of Walt Disney, what he said about Disneyland in that sense of reaching out to the guest and making sure that uh, things are updated and things changed as society changes. And so I think this is important for a DE class. We don't do correspondence education classes at all, whether through ISP or whether through DE. So what that means is we all need to have a clear instructor presence in the class. We all realize that the computer canvas itself will grade things for us if there are multiple choice exams and so forth. But really, we have to make sure we're checking in, I would say, daily to make sure that students are getting what they need in terms of their education. If you have a discussion board set up, you really do need to be involved 100% in that discussion board. I've seen some discussion boards in the past where there really isn't a lot of instructor involvement, and in my mind that's really not a discussion board. A discussion board has to have constant instructor presence. So be on the lookout for a little more information about that later in the quarter. And I think that's it. So those are my tips to get your class uh, finished up. If you're not finished here on Sunday night, uh, it would be a great idea actually to have it done by Sunday night such that Monday morning hits 8 a.m. The students, if they're checking out your class, they have the information they need to go uh, to get going, to get started with the class, and to be successful in your DE class here at Lake Tahoe Community College. So if any questions come up, please feel free to email me or contact me via Canvas. I will come back with some additional videos as I move through the quarter and talk about strategies for successful DE education here at LTCC. So that's it for now. Good luck finishing up your class if you're still working on it.